Welcome back to the Rope Access channel. In this video, I will be teaching you a skill that's always sort of taken for granted, but it's on the assessment form in the Rope Access courses, and it is climbing with a fall arrest system. Let's get into it. A fall arrest system consists of a couple of parts, and the main part is in the middle, which is the shock absorber. In case of a fall, it will extend and limit the impact on your body and the anchor point. It will absorb part of the shock. They tear open at somewhere between 4 to 6 kN, depending on manufacturer and manufacturer, age, and a whole host of other things. But around 4 to 6 kN, but not above 6 kN. Then we have the attachment point that goes onto your harness, and then we have the two big, what we like to call scaff hooks, because they fit over a scaff pipe, and you can climb on the scaffolding. Now, where do we connect these things? Let's start at the harness point. It's a backup device. It has a shock absorber, the same as with your uh, ASAP. So we connect it to one of the high anchor points, one on the chest on or on the back. Dorsal and ventral. I think. Either way, the point is always marked with an A. Somebody's sneaking behind the camera. <laughs> it's um, made by, with a, marked with an A. It's right here, and I won't be able to show you like this, but there's an A in there as well. Your full arrest system goes there. So I attach it to the top part. Either one is good, but this is way more easy when you're climbing and need to move around a lot. I attach it in such a way, the same with the ASAP and the same with the Grillon and the same with the ID or my descender. If I'm hanging in it, I want the gate pointing towards me. Easy to check visually and the strongest part is pointing to any structure we might be hitting. Now, how, how do these operate? It's, it is a, a two way carabiner, but a fairly large one, because I cannot open it, so I need to do something else. It's like a screw gate or something. I need to hit this first, and then I can open it. So it's two moves before I can open it. It won't open out of, by itself. Where do I attach it? I attach it, I'm gonna be climbing in this tower. As you will see, there's a couple of ways to do it and a couple of ways how not to do it. So first one is, well, let me show you on this one. I go over both of the pipes. If I would fall down, it will be loaded in that direction and in that direction it can move freely. The other way, which is possible, would be on the vertical. If I load it, there is a little bit of twisting going on, but testing has shown that this is not an issue. But there is one point when the, the, it gets too big, but I cannot give you like an exact number or degrees. I can only tell you that for this situation, this is perfect. But how not to do it? What happens often when people are climbing up here is that they, try it on this one again, is they try to clip both, like this, but they miss and they climb up like this, which is not what we want. We always want closed gates, so we keep checking them at all times. But one of the things that might happen if they keep climbing is that it moves like this. And now, let's see, yeah, it looks good. And now it's very bad loading and you can, I can see it move easily and I'm not putting on that much force. So we don't want it. We always have to think what happens if I would fall? How would my connection be loaded? It's either like this, where it can move freely, or it's like this on this structure. Now, before we get started with the practical stuff, if you like this type of content, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell to always be notified as soon as I upload a new one. Leave a comment on things you 
were taught differently or learned yourself how to do differently or if you have any questions about specific materials or videos you would like to see, put it in the comments and let's get this conversation going. When you have a shock absorber, a fall arrest lanyard, which has two hooks, you always use both. There's a few reasons for that. One might be if it's attached to my harness like this on a really strong bomb proof point or I put it straight in like so. Well, this looks weird anyway, but that's because of this harness. It doesn't have a big ring where I can put it in. If I would fall now, this needs to tear out and this might actually interfere with the working of the absorber. And if I would fall and this would not work properly and would hit me like this, we don't want it. In the past, people used to say you always attach it to your gear loop, like so, because that's something that can tear off. But I have personally tested a harness where we put 400 kilos on the gear loop. So I think maybe even 450 with dropping some extra weight on it. Moral of the story, these gear loops from the, the modern harnesses are pretty strong so we don't do that we just use them all you can, you can go like this or you can go like this or some harnesses have the special clips here those are made to put them in this one has an elastic band we can all see that this will tear before there will be any interference but then we may question what will happen if i'm falling and this is next to my face we don't want to hurt our pretty faces let's go up all right as you've seen i'm ready to climb i have my fall arrest lanyard connected to the correct point on my harness i have shown you how to attach these cat hooks to this structure but like i said it varies per structure what you can use and all the distances in between i will be climbing with my hooks on my left hand side because that's easier to see for you guys on the camera. Usually I will be on my right hand side because I'm right handed, but then it will be on the opposite sides of which you will be able to see. So what I'm doing is I'm attaching it as high as I, as high as I can and I'm either climbing or I'm moving the hooks. I'm not doing both. All right, so I climb up until I'm at the height of my top anchor point. I do two steps. I'm at my top anchor point. I get my bottom scaff hook and reach as high as I can. Now I check that the gate is closed and I do two more steps. One, two. Because if I would do one more, I would actually climb past my anchor point and be in a fall factor. Well, go over fall factor two. So I take my bottom hook, put it as high as I can reach basically, check the gate, it's closed, and I can continue climbing. Here we go. One, two. Again, I take the bottom hook, reach as high as I can go, check the gate that it's closed. One, two and I'm at the top so if I want to climb down everything reverses when I climb up I start moving scaff hooks when I reach the top one when I climb down I start moving scaff hooks when I reach the bottom one going down so here we go I step one more step down and now I reach the bottom one that's the moment I move my top one. And basically, in this tower, that means that I'm skipping one anchor point and then I'll be fine all, all the way through. There are some easy mistakes that can be made. I will show you at the end of the video. So I climb down one step, two step. I reach the bottom scaff hook. I take my top scaff hook go down and I'm taking care that everything is nice, neat and tidy and that the gate is closed. 
I do two more steps down. I take my top hook. Check that it is closed. Two more steps down. That's basically it. This is gonna be, don't do this at home kids. This is not the way to do it, but I want to show you because we see it often, especially out in the field, people climbing with stuff in their hands. So this is one of those scenarios. Because now I'm actually not able to hold on properly. I have something in my hand. If my foot would slip, I really need two hands on the structure. Second fold is especially climbing on the way down. I climb down, one, two. I reach my bottom scaff hook. I take my top one, throw it as low as I can go. I climb down, I reach the top one. I wanna, oh man, I can't reach it. I climb up and now I undo this one. But if this one would be undone, I have my bottom hook is at my knee level. So that's a pretty big fall. It's not, not fall factor two, but it's huge and it's gonna, I'll probably survive if I would be higher off the deck, um, but I would hit the structure really hard and it would hurt. So if this happens, if you find yourself in this position, put the top one, uh, the bottom one back up and now I'm at chest level. And I'm down safely. The next one is clipping the lanyard with my scaffold, like so. Now, is it lethal? Will I die? It's no, not really, because I fall, then this will probably go straight, but it's not a best practice, so we don't want to do it. So, take care to manage that you're always, that your hooks are always clear of anything. All right, so this is climbing with a fall arrest system. There's more types of fall arrest systems, but this is the most basic one, often used for the first ascent on places where we install ropes afterwards to work suspended. That's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment on what you would like to see next. I will see you in the next one. Stay connected.